happening. What do you have to share with us? All right, the first story I have has to do with what is behind the Rivers of America. Starting on on the 5th, which is in two days, they're going to be closing off pretty much the Rivers of America, and they're going to be draining it, doing some refurbishments, and cleaning it. Because as you may have guessed, rivers can get awfully dirty, and so they're going to be shutting down the Rivers of America for, it could be anywhere up until February 2021, possibly longer, depending on how everything with the Walt Disney Company goes around. Uh, but they're going to be shutting it off primarily from uh, Harper's Mill right there on down past where uh, Big Thunder Mountain is. That's what cast members have led us to believe. And it could be anything from just doing a normal cleaning to, you know, putting in new tracks or adding new sort of amenities or, I don't know, maybe they're going to add experience. Highly unlikely, but Rivers America is going to be they're gonna find shut down for a little <laughs> bit. So, unfortunately, uh, you won't be able to set you know, on all the Rivers of America. Maybe you'll be able to go down half of the Mississippi or half of Missouri. You're definitely not going down the Ohio. Uh, <laughs> Sacramento River, who knows? Uh, yeah, I don't know many rivers in, in America, so that's all I got. I, I got those, like, four. <laughs> he, he, he isn't about that geography. No, no. Uh, I'm, well, I'm, a, I'm a communication major, not a geography <laughs> major. <laughs> Uh, well, Tyler, Katrina, you guys have a trip coming up here not too, uh, not in the not-too-distant future, I should yeah. say. Um, you, you sad? It sounds like the uh, walls are going to be around the rivers of America and Magic Kingdom. It would just make it feel so closed. Yeah. Show, it's kind share of, me pictures when you go on yeah, October. <laughs> honestly, and I'm, I'm like a weird enough Disney geek that I'm kind of excited in a way because oh. I'm like, oh, maybe I can like peek my head through some crack and like see what's going on in there. But... Uh, but you know, I, honestly, I'm not. I, I would be. I would be more uh, upset if it was at Disneyland because I feel like Disneyland is like such a picturesque kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of makes the whole vibe work. Um, for me, at Disney World, it's not quite as important. I don't really need to go to mm. Tom Sawyer Island or go on the Liberty Bell quite as much as I would love to do like a Mark Twain thing. Sure. Mm. So. Um, yeah, I'm kind of excited to see what it's going to look like, honestly. Yeah, no, it, it'll be uh, nice to get things refreshed out there. Yeah. I know the Magic Kingdom uh, is usually battered and bruised through the year with so many people visiting. However, this year, not necessarily a problem. Uh, so it has been a lot, a lot more lightly attended, I should say, uh, than at any other point. So this might be a good year to, to drain well. and yeah, uh, clean up some things. Uh, and all I know is that when the river is usually drained at Disneyland, the stench that comes from the rivers oh, of America that's following true. the drainage. I can imagine Florida's <laughs> oh, like, yeah. icky water. <laughs> Only <laughs> elevated by the humidity. No Ooh, doubt. Boy. Yay. Yeah. What, what, Garrett? What, what? I was going to say, luckily, if you're worried about the stench, you have a mask to, you know, keep you from smelling <laughs> yeah, part of it. Yeah, there's the thinking so, positive. Yeah. Good it's job. Got I, I'm a glass half full kind of guy or a uh, river half full kind of guy out here. Yeah, yeah, you know how it is out here in the Mississippi. It's mighty stinky. Yeah, <laughs> and when it comes to face masks, it sounds like uh, there has been some, well, reestablishing of standards when it comes to uh, the Orlando area and, and Walt Disney World in particular. What's going on? Yeah, so last week I reported on the show that uh, Governor DeSantis had pretty much said, Phase 3, everything can go to 100% if you want it to be and you won't get in trouble and stuff. Uh, but everyone was wondering, is Disney World going to now go to 100%? The answer is no. <laughs> it is not going to 100% at all. That's not happening. Uh, Disney has stated that they're not going to be removing face masks or social distancing. They're going to be keeping everything as is. However, they are going to look at things as time progresses to see if they want to uh, make more cha changes, such as maybe letting more guests in or maybe opening up more areas. So. Uh, this is very much still a you have to wear a mask if you want to be here. Otherwise, you get a trespassing warning. Uh, Yay. So, <laughs> Which people so deserve if they're not going to be doing that. Yeah, the come with your yeah, come with your mask. Check it out. Uh, luckily, right now, the weather is getting cooler and cooler. Today, I think the high was 82 uh, for Floridian. That is winter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but... The weather feels fantastic. I don't feel like I'm dying. Even in a thick polo and, and a, a face mask, I'm not sweating at all. And so the weather, as the time goes by, come on out here if you have the ability to or if you feel safe enough because you won't have to worry about sweating all day long. Some days are better than others, but for the past few days, weather's been pretty fantastic. But keep the mask on. Keep yourself safe. 
Awesome to hear. And I think that uh, as long as, you know, there isn't a vaccine, I think that these um, precautions, these safety standards that have been put into place are probably uh, really important for the sake of uh, a lot of comfort levels of people visiting, uh, even with, you know, the state sort of saying, hey, you know, let's, let's kick it into phase three and go for it. Um, I think theme parks in particular probably already put that hesitation in people's mind of like, oh, I don't want to go into a theme park and be around crowds. Um, I think keeping some of these safety precautions and some of these health and safety standards in place is probably a good idea. Garrett, it sounds like Disney's Hollywood Studios, though, has a returning show. Finally, <laughs> your favorite, as I understand it. The inner princess in me is beyond ecstatic. Uh, that's because we're about to let it snow. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> the Frozen Sing Along uh, celebration is going to be reopening uh, on October 5th in Disney's Hollywood Studios. If you've never experienced it, it is uh, where the former American Idol experience used to be. If you never experienced that, well, it's right next to the Chinese Theater. Uh, so it's in that main central hub, and you go in there and you get to watch Anna and Elsa and all their friends come out and we could sing along with them. Also, probably the best part of the show for, for me or possibly for adults, they have two comedians come out that help add to the story and telling jokes. And honestly, it reminds me of when the genie used to tell jokes during the uh, Aladdin musical in Disney's California Adventure. So uh, I think it's a much needed thing to come to Hollywood Studios, frankly, because there's only like seven things to do. Now there's eight things. So, hey, you can now <laughs> fill up every hour with a brand new activity. Yeah, I try and forget uh, while about you're waiting. Run. Yeah. <laughs> instead, instead of waiting 80 minutes for Smuggler's Run, you can now wait 30 minutes for uh, <laughs> Frozen. So I do it, is, it is what it is. Um, but it did not come without a cost. Uh, many people say that because this show came back, that is one of the driving factors that got rid of the... Uh, the Grand Floridian Orchestra. That's what reports have led to believe. However, we'll never know for sure what's yeah. in the paperwork. But uh, at least we get some music and some entertainment. Uh, I personally would have rather had the Indiana Jones stunt spectacular. <laughs> but Indy, I don't, I don't, I don't call the shots yet. Yet, <laughs> yeah, hard to tell what uh, decision making wise, you know, what what was put up against each other, and you know what, because obviously that was all on a spreadsheet and all looked at yeah. as all right. What packs more of a punch in terms of value, in terms of experience? Uh, ideally, you know, you're going to want to go with something in park for the sake of keeping hordes of people entertained, and mm -hmm. you know, probably capacity is a big measure in all of that. How many people can you turn through in a park that has so little to do right now? Um, and we, we don't necessarily know, I guess, that um, you know, Grand Floridian Orchestra was uh, eliminated because of this, but yeah, that is certainly the rumor, and um, yeah, it, it would be a shame to know that uh, any show pushed out another show, but uh, I get it. You know, when you're trying to balance the books, some things mm -hmm. have to be eliminated over others. Yeah, I mean, I it, mean, I think they're just trying to get rid of all kind of like hotel expenditures. Auxiliary. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, you know, get rid of Yeehaw Bob, get rid of the Polynesian dancers, get rid of these things because, you know, not all people are going to be hanging out and coming from different places to come visit to to do to listen to the orchestra or whatever. But still right. heartbreaking. Yeah, like it makes sense to put more in the theme parks. I get that. But. Uh, and I'm happy that people have any type of job. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm happy for the people that do the Frozen show. But uh, man, you're gonna you're gonna gut me with the Yeehaw Bob thing, and then and then bring back the Frozen thing. It's like, <laughs> come on now, <laughs> double whammy. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what that yeah. is. Uh, unfortunate news uh, in one instance, and then um, of course happy to hear uh, that we are going to be seeing uh, the ladies of Arendelle returning here to Hollywood Studios very soon. Uh, Garrett, my friend, it sounds like some annual pass action is going on out there that uh, might just be some positive news potentially for us out here if and when <laughs> Disneyland reopens. Yeah, there is a slight victory for the uh, for annual pass holders. So when the parks reopened. Annual pass holders at the time were not, uh, or if you did not have an annual pass, you could not buy a new one. Uh, but it looks like if your pass expired after March 16th or was canceled after March 16th, you are able to renew it or get a brand new one. However, this is a case by case basis. So you'll have to talk to the cast member and hope that your case works out. So it's a slight victory. Um, overall, no new cat. Like if you've never had an annual pass, you can't go out and buy one. You're going to have to do the, daily park uh, pass ticket and then make a reservation, uh, which is what I, I assume many of the guests here are doing. Uh, myself, my annual pass, uh, it had ex 
it would have expired back in April, but because I kept doing payments, they extended it out. And now it's about to expire in October, but because I am still in the, like, since it's still active, I'm going to be able to renew it at, I believe, a 10% discount. So if you have an annual pass, try and keep it going. Uh, if you if it had been canceled, then know it. Call a cast member, see if you can renew it if you want to. If not, that's okay too. Up to you. We know that everyone's financial uh, situation is tough. And coming along the way to also uh, talk to us is Chippendale. You can't really see them, but they're coming to deliver news about annual passes as well because, you know, they want you to come out and visit them. No doubt about it. Is there, is that, are they on the barge? They're little troublemakers. Yes, they are on a barge. Let, let me get them close. Let's, oh, I'm going geez. in the water. Don't fall go. in. Yeah. Don't drop the phone. All right. Yeah, we got it. Here's some magic for you folks out there. Chip and Dale, as best as you can see. Oh, see, I got a soft spot for Dale. Why, why Dale? Dale, not Chip. Because, like, Dale, he's a silly one, and I think I'm a, I'm a silly person. Oh, okay. Like, they're both silly. That makes sense. Look at that. Dale, amazing. he's got the funnier voice. Katrina but, has a soft spot yeah. for their feet. <laughs> oh. Come again? <laughs> I, I, I hate, you heard me. I hate feet so much. Feet are gross. But then I don't know. Okay. These little these little chipmunks. Their feet are so cute. They're just so tiny. Well, <laughs> I don't know. The, the sad thing is, I've never seen an actual chipmunk. I've only ever seen one of those guys. I've never seen a chipmunk in real life. I've seen squirrels. I've seen possums. I've seen every kind of varmint out there except an actual little chipmunk. Well, so, it's like looking in a uh, mirror between those two and all the chipmunks. Oh, I thought you. I thought you were calling me. Yeah, me yeah, that's yeah, that's right. yeah, I heard the gasp everywhere in here. No, it's. Uh, <laughs> I, I am not that mean spirited. It's, uh, you know, producer Kurt would have said something like that, yeah. but not me. Yeah, I would never say something yeah. like that. No, no, no. I mean, like looking in a mirror of uh, uh, Chip and Dale, looking in the uh, the mirror. It's it's the yeah. same image. I uh, know. Uh, so, fun fact: if you don't know who Chip or Dale is, and you're just like, "Hey, look, squirrels," not squirrels. So, Chip has a black nose like a chocolate chip. And Dale has a red nose, or a Dale is also another word for a gap between your teeth. I'm trying to be louder than Chip and Dale, and then the Princess Cavalcade coming down. Oh, no. I'm competing right now. We're doing a live show. You're ruining Panama, the spotlight. Right? Reminds me of some vloggers I've seen. Jeez Louise. Yeah. Great timing, yeah, Garrett. I, I, like... Oh, oh, they're just oh, they're right coming on towards back. you. Here be they come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How hey, authentic guys. are you? Oh, they're in their Halloween attire. Look how it is. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. They're so cute. I love their little tails. Look at the feet. Look at the feet. <laughs> you can see them. <laughs> <laughs> well, Garrett, we appreciate you being out there for us. Uh, happy 49 years to Magic Kingdom. That's uh, right. As oh, I thought you were going to. I'm like, I'm not 49. I'm only 87, man. Like, you're setting it way too low for me. But. Uh, yeah, happy birthday. Yeah, October 1st, 1971. Disney World opened with Magic Kingdom and also in 82, Epcot opened. Yeah. Thank Fun you fact. for that. He knows his dates. Yeah, and, and, and I know dates. I know dates and I know Disney stuff. You I don't do. know much of anything else, no. but with, with Disney, they are the only thing that as they get older, they get better looking. Everyone else, except for like, like, I don't know, Samuel L. Jackson, they, they get older. <laughs> so. like, I was trying to think of a good comparison. Samuel yeah. L. Jackson doesn't age. Plus, he's frozen. Yeah, but Disney gets better with age. Mickey, same thing. They're coming back again. They're oh coming back for revenge. <laughs> get out of there. That's, yeah. they, they, they know. Like, they know, yeah. They, they, they know. Like, you guys had your show. You had Rescue Rangers. Oh, this poor lady. <laughs> but Absorbing I don't have time. time out here. The guests appear to be loving it. They are corralling everyone. That's cool to see them out yeah. on the barge and definitely making an impact uh, Halloween style uh, yeah. out there at Magic yeah. Kingdom. Oh. Garrett, thanks so much for being with us this week. Uh, don't uh, don't go swimming today uh, out in the rivers of America. I know you want to do it one last time before things shut down. Uh, so be safe. Yeah, like I would love it. I would love a nice swim, but I'm gonna wait for that thing to be clean and then I still will not jump in it. I'll stick to the waters of Splash Mountain while that's still around too. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. <laughs>